on Sunday. Our correspondent, Shadia M. Tashti, reports from London. Well, the questions here in the United Kingdom is where is the government and where is the leadership in responding to the crisis in Afghanistan? In fact, the last time we heard from the Prime Minister Boris Johnson last week, he said that Britain should be incredibly proud of what it's achieved in the region. Obviously, uh, in light of this complete Taliban takeover, a very questioning uh, response indeed. And today, uh, the Prime Minister is hosting a COBRA meeting. That's a meeting where the Cabinet should all be attending. But the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Dominic Raab is nowhere to be seen as he is on holiday and obviously it's his job to try and deal with these international uh, issues, particularly in regards to foreign policy. And that uh, has really sparked and instigated a whole host of criticism against him. For the Foreign Secretary to go AWOL during an international crisis of this magnitude is nothing short of a shameful. I think it was amazing, staggering, that the Foreign Secretary was still on holiday while Afghanistan was collapsing to the Taliban. You've got to be on duty during that sort of period where we're so deeply and intimately involved in it. We haven't heard from the Foreign Secretary in about a week, despite this being the biggest single foreign policy disaster since Suez. So I don't know what the Foreign Office is thinking. Obviously, the United Kingdom has been part of this NATO occupation over the last 18 years. The Brits first and initially went in under the international uh, pretense of a pro-humanitarian and pro-democracy uh, mission. However, arguably with the very fact and speed of this Taliban takeover, many people point to the uh, defeat both militarily and politically. This sounds as a very humiliating time for the West and their foreign policy because the West has always predicated its entire regimes on being the most robust. And it's not just uh, anti-war activists that have this uh, point of view, but even some Tory backbenchers in government. This is completely humiliating for the West. We assembled the most incredible, technologically advanced alliance the world has ever seen, and we're being defeated by an insurgency that's armed with AK-47s and RPGs. This will be the biggest own goal made by the West so far this century. The humanitarian disaster that's about to unfold will be catastrophic. The migration challenges will be huge. We will see further terrorist attacks. We know over the weekend 600 troops were deployed as a rescue mission to try and get these people back safely. That includes British nationals, but also Afghanis that helped assist the British Army during the occupation. Already around 300 people have been flown back. The idea is around 12 to 1,500 uh, throughout the next few days till the total 4,000 are brought home. But we've seen absolute chaotic scenes at Kabul airport. What we do know is the military side of that airport, as in the British side, uh, where the British planes are in that airport, are at this point in time uh, secure. However, the Defence Secretary Ben Wallace here in the United Kingdom, speaking earlier today in a radio interview, became very, very emotional. He even became uh, quite choked up. Some people won't get back, and um, we will have to uh, do our best in third countries to process these people. Why do you feel it so personally, Mr. Wallace? <laughs> Come on, Mr. Wallace. Um, because it's sad, 20 years of sacrifice um, is what it is. Parliament is being recalled back from summer recess. That's on Wednesday. I think I'll be speaking of everything from the war on terror's uh, agenda and foreign policy in the first place to the very fact that five weeks ago uh, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson said that a Taliban takeover would be out of the question. Obviously, that is spectacularly uh, wrong at this point. So many uh, people will be questioning the Prime Minister on all of that. But what about the intelligence that provided this NATO exodus in the first place? And crucially, what will happen to all of these refugees over the last 18 years? Millions of people in Afghanistan have been displaced. And now we are set to see, quite undoubtedly, uh, another refugee crisis. And there's much pressure here in the United Kingdom to provide safe and legal passages. But in light of quite a hostile context uh, uh, from the Home Office in terms of its refugee uh, processes, there's a lot of criticism uh, against the government at this point. So what we'll see on Wednesday is a huge array of criticism. Most of all, of course, 50,000 uh, civilians died during this 18-year occupation, 500 uh, British troops, and many people question, what was it all for? Well, that's a wrap.